Amanda. I'm Ben. We're on to say welcome to our channel. Today we're watching Vinland Saga, Season 2, Episode 14. I felt like I had somewhat of a grasp on the direction that we were going in before last episode. Before last episode, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Now we have this entire other plot that's happening that all while shit is literally coming towards us, where Arnaid has seen her, her husband who has killed his owner and is on horseback running past her at the moment. And that might breed contention. That might breed a fight. Garter, right? Right, Garter. I I think at the end of last episode, I was maybe going a little too heavy on trying to interpret her emotional expression on her face. And I, I definitely wanted, wanted to keep my mind open. And that's why I was going to a place of, yes, it could be a disbelief at seeing him because it's been so long. It could actually be a love connection. And we could just be saying that Anar, there was a one-sided love here, a one-sided romantic feelings. And that's totally fine. But I also did want to keep an open mind that maybe this isn't a good thing. Because this husband, he he might not have been a good husband. He might not have been someone that she loved. And that's I, maybe me still keeping a torch lit for Anar to have a chance. Mm. But I also want to keep an open mind because the expression was so, so uh tense yeah and her eyebrows how they were i was like this is either just shock and disbelief but it could also be fear if if i look at it a different way and i just want to keep an open mind about it so i really don't know i don't know clearly how arnade feels here see i like how you're diving into trying to understand where arnade's emotions are at yes. when i'm like i'm worried that people are going to die yeah. like a lizard no, is fair. dead that's totally fair garter is injured Snake sees Garter, or uh, on the way inside to get a sword, he's not just gonna, like, let Garter go here. He killed fucking Lizard. Mm -hmm. What's this gonna look like? Who's going to get hurt? Who we don't know how strong Garter here. really is compared to Snake. We have multiple men here that could fight Garter. Does that mean we're all going to fight? Is there going to be a one-on-one? -on -one? We have no clue. We're probably a little worried. I'm a little worried about Arnaid on on many levels because if this is in fact her husband that she loves, he won't get if he gets caught here, he won't survive. Yeah. And if this is is in fact the man that she loves, she might have to see him be killed here. Someone that she is now seeing is still alive. And that idea that something is returned to you that you loved and then is ripped away from you when they come to save you and uh, liberate you yeah i i'm i'm very worried about arnade's emotional state i'm worried about like what might happen to spherical this episode too also spherical is definitely on his deathbed <sighs> chaos everywhere honestly you ready yes sweet also cutting in here to talk about whether or not we are going to be watching the intro and outro for vinland saga going forward and most likely majority of our shows going forward um so there have been specifically one time I can remember in another show, Attack on Titan, that there was an intro that I was extremely happy we were told and urged not to watch and wait for until we were told, you know, able to see it for ourselves. And I'm very happy in hindsight that we didn't watch that. Mm -hmm. um, that was a 99% consensus of us not watching it. Before then, I've always uh, gone the route of watching what is given to me and taking the content and watching it as it was presented to me, mm -hmm. intro and outro included. Um, oftentimes, if not, you know, I'd say like 50, 60% of the times, whether it's thematic or in your face, an intro for anime can give spoilers or context to something that you might not have any context for before mm -hmm. and could give you hints at what what might come, what the outcome might be. Um, and I acknowledge that for what that is. But within that lies intros and endings that 
include things intentionally to divert expectations. I can think of like two easily off the top of my head, like a My Hero Academia or a, a Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1 intro, right? Um, so because of that, combined with the lack of there being any clear consensus about what we should be doing in this series or other series at all, um, we are going to side with the watching as intended and watching as presented to us side of things. I completely understand how that would definitely make people who are on the other end of that desire up upset because what the fuck? Like, like, you know that it could contain something that would potentially alter our experience and lessen it potentially. But like it or not, I have so many instances in reading too far into something or reading not enough into something that even if something is shown in my face, I can make an idiot out of myself for my interpretation of it. So with that in consideration, I think that we're going to just go forward and watch what's given to us unless there's a massive consensus because when we have two moderators and even they're at, in disagreement with each other about it, it puts us in a position where we can wait and not record the show and try to get more intel or just go forward with it like we always have. So I think that that's what what I'm 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 settled with doing. Agreed. And if it's anything like the intro for season two of Inland Saga, like the first intro we got, I feel like my opinion of it was a lot of what the visuals were were more like a hindsight. Mm -hmm. Like it was like, oh yeah, that makes sense to me now because I've already viewed the content. I think that for season two, the first opening is the perfect example of what I would love an intro and anime to it be. It unlocks as you go through the series. It means more as you mm -hmm. go through. Because if you're being very straight up, you're going to be like, okay, well, I didn't see Thorfinn with a beard in this way. So that spoiled me, you know, and then you're right to say that because it, it technically did. But with all things considered, I'm very happy that we watched it when we did. I think all of that comes down to subjective opinions and you, you can enjoy content however you want. And, you know, hell, if at the end of the series or season, we're going to be like, damn, I wish we wouldn't have watched it. That's a possibility, we of will course. Have opinions, but I'm sure. Yeah, if I'm honest, I don't think that it'll be that way. But, uh, Without further ado, let's get into it. Here we go. Wow. That was pretty. The gods can judge me when I'm dead. I, when I'm dead. I love Whoa. this song, man. I love this song. I am obsessed oh, with this song. Oh, but it's going to get better. This needs to be added to a playlist for me. I will be looking for an instrumental or a karaoke version of this immediately after watching this episode. Oh. oh god, here we go. Freedom. So he knew what farm she was at. I didn't know how far away, though. The music is... He said the two of you were so- <gasps> Oh no! She had a kid? What happened to them? Oh my god. Oh no. Oh, shit. If you do, I'll kill him. Woo! Fuck the horse. Oh, she hasn't gotten to tell him. Hearing that he killed someone. Listen to the soundtrack, man. Oh my god. His job is to protect Kettle on the farm. And all Anar can do is watch this. 
What's Thorfinn doing? あの兄さんの弟子が彼女を助けに来たんだ。あの兄さんに自由になってほしい。ああ。ええだろ。俺はそんなこと言ってるんじゃない。お前に人が殺せるのか。ちょっと。ちょっと。おそらいいんだよ
お前たちもなキャルティーそなたを守るために父は戦うのだぞ理解できませんでした守るためなら一緒にいてくれればいいのに若い男は皆戦へ赴き残された女と子供は家を守り数週間が経ちましたそして船を見た時男たちが帰ってきたと思いましたでもそれは I lost my son over pots. 男たちのルスを狙われたんです私はキャルティを感じましたきっとたくさんの苦しみが彼を変えてしまったのでしょう。今は彼こそが嵐そのものです。今度こそ、今度こそ私は男たちの嵐から子供を守らなければなりません。子供だ。Oh my god! 私のお腹にはケティル様のお子がいますこの農場ならきっと平和に健やかにこの子を育てることができますだからエイノルさんこのまま嵐が過ぎ去るまでこのままだけでもわかるんです。もう会うべきではないと。なのに、どうしてわしもかつてじっと耐えて嵐をやりすごしたことがある。いや、隠れておったのだ。とふれをもがらす。そのころ、ケティル、息子は。東京の美しい娘と愛し合っておっただがある日その娘が近隣で力を伸ばしていたエッベという男に見染められてしまいわしらは苦しい決断を迫られたケティルは娘を守るために戦いも辞さない覚悟だった、wow. 我らの下した決断は服従だったわしは保身のために一人の娘を差し出したのだそして娘が嫁いだ日<笑>エッペの富を妬み憎しみを抱いた男の仕業だった Wealth, 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 fighting over wealth, the perilous <laughs>
hear him over there. Okay, that was Vinland Saga season two, episode fourteen. So, that was one of my favorite episodes of the season. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, it's okay. I was gonna say that was a cry. <laughs> wow. I, I want. I think that the most, the best part of the episode for me was uh, the writing and the word choice and the dialogue. I think that's easy to say. I thought the composition and specifically the coloring was amazing. It was nice to have that kind of lush saturation within Arnaid's memories compared to the desaturated of what we're normally used to with Cattail's farm. Yeah. You know, I... Th this entire season has been, like, mind-blowing to me um, in terms of, like, the quality, but how unpredictable it's been and the connections that have shown their faces like where i hadn't imagined they, they they would i if you three episodes ago i was in a completely different place and i can't believe all it took was like two episodes to completely make me forget about leaf coming and canute coming right i mean the stuff that's happened in this episode how could it not kind of wipe that away from just at least an emotional standpoint i think uh especially what it this episode was to obviously this episode is for our maid it was titled freedom really yeah that, at the beginning of the episode it said freedom this episode was for or Arnaid's story, but if we were to think of who it was for, for our main characters or the characters who might have like more of a plot influence, it was a big episode for Einar mm -hmm. because what happens is that he he learns to instead of jumping right in, something that's really good that happens here for him is that he hears from the mouth of the person that he was trying to jump in to protect what they want from him. And I think that that is really important for just like a lesson in general for people is that you, if you want to do something for someone, I think that you should want it to be something that they would appreciate the most. And what it was for her that she would appreciate the most in that time period was not for him to join the fight and get hurt. It was to be able to share her story with someone and have them understand her, but also her be able to work through her own emotions right now about what she's the one that just witnessed her husband for the first time in years. She's the one that just saw him be a completely different person than he had ever been before. She is the one that you should be going to, to like, to hear what she wants from you to hear what she needs you need to be emotionally there for her because she is the one that just had this giant thing happen to her her world's colliding this man reached his hand out to her once again the idea of her her child but now also her unborn child she is the one that needs all of the care in the world here from these characters and it would not have been the most caring to her in that moment to to jump in and fight. Like, uh, Thorfinn's like, Anar, you don't know everything that's going on. And Anar's like, yes, I do. Obviously he didn't, because what do we learn? She's pregnant. All, There's complications there. Like, regardless, like at a certain point, there, specifically with what Arnaid's going through, once they're inside and the storm started regardless of what your intention is or your thought process is, all it's going to be to Arnaid is another thing for her to sort through and another decision that she has to make. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I love Einar and his desire to want to help and want to give what he believes are, are like is the best outcome and future and uh, the happiest outcome for Arnaid. But Arnaid's been th through something that nobody has even thought to consider because they had no idea it existed in the first place. 
you always say like um to ask questions mm -hmm. in this instance all anar is working on at the beginning of this episode is some a couple facts and the facts are yes that is her husband yes he has killed some men and is trying to whisk her away to freedom oh well i've been trying to think of a way to get our maid to be free well here's the perfect opportunity but there's more to it, obviously. And we get from her, one of the first things she says is, I was scared of him when I saw exactly. him. Exactly. I want to bring up the th like what you brought up in the intro about what your original I was worried interpretation about yeah. of Arnaid's feelings were. I think that get, like, given the limited information that Anar had of them being a couple, like he did his best under those circumstances to make sense of it and then try to be helpful but what truly w the only thing that really would have been helpful to her at that point is asking her what can i do for you what do you need from me right now right it, it's this whole uh almost show a, b a bunch of it is a lesson of do not act rashly without having thought of all the facts but also thought about what the possible outcomes or consequences could be. This whole episode even was a lesson in that. What happens when people see something they want or something they could perceive could better their lives and they just go for it, but they don't think about what would be the aftermath. What would be, what am I willing to, what can I justify here in giving up or fighting for something? I loved that Thorfinn stopped him and granted it wasn't for like for the you don't know if this is going to help our Nade right now it was Thorfinn's understanding of Einar's thought process before even hearing it out loud and trying to be logical about it and be like great thought but it wouldn't actually happen the way that you would want it to and it's like that just adding on to the different people and perspectives in this show and universe that we've seen be able to grow and not act rashly and uh, just solely based off of emotion. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, like, like how, how they, I, I'm sure we're going to get into specific lines that really stood out to us, but how they talk about storms and what, and then the fact that they leave behind scars, it, it, it feels like a storm can come from anything, from any intention, from any motivation. It, it it's, a, it's an element of chaos, right? It's an element of somebody believing in with full certainty that they're right and acting upon it with greed, violence, or a hundred percent they're right and they know what's what's for the best. Is, is what Canute is doing akin to creating a storm? Yes. You know? And, I would say so. And, who, and who's, who's on, who's the head on the ground, you know? Like, I, I, man. I, one of my, we only got to see it for half a second, but when Arnaid was recounting what happened, we got specifically when the ships arrived back we got to see thorfinn's expression mm -hmm. man you know what it makes me think of that's why we saw his scar. expression hmm? i said that's a fucking scar yeah well yeah the why thorfinn would emote to that scene specifically that she's painting in her past is because of one of his scars being the old woman that took him in. Yeah. And what happened, the ships arriving on the beach and what that meant for that entire village. I mean, the callback there of, and then having him reacting the way that they did, it was perfect. And it didn't take too much time and attention away from Arnaid, which I, I really appreciate that for this episode. Like, this was Arnaid's episode to tell her story. And I appreciate that the main characters that we've known for so long, especially Thorfinn, didn't divert attention away from her. I completely like, agree. They, if anything, they added to us the power and the emotional turmoil that would be caused, the scars 
that would be caused and what the longevity of dealing with those would be for a person and how almost also reminding us of the repetition of these conflicts, the repetition of men acting in this way, war for wealth and continuously hurting each other. It's not even just war either, right? Like we're given an example of war and fighting, but in the same episode, we're given an example of pacifism for the same reason. Right. Pacifism for not because you're wanting to do what's right, but pacifism because you can see how this will benefit you at the moment and cause you less trouble and stress now. And it, it's a, the same means to an end. Mm-hmm. But also like fear. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason was it really pacifism? Like, it, can it still be pacifism if it's for things other than not wanting to fight? True. Or is it more just that you were scared and you didn't want to deal with the stress or the hardship or the hurt of fighting for something? But yeah, fighting for iron versus fighting for your son, the love of your son's life. Mm-hmm. And a a poor young girl who was about to be arranged into a marriage that she did not want to be a part of, who also loved your son back. Well, what might be the outcome there? Like, let's say that regardless of the outcome, it doesn't end favorably for you. Let's even change it a little bit and say regardless of the outcome, you die. Mm -hmm. Would you, in which life would you rather die? In which way would you rather die? What's worth fighting for? We've been talking about for Thorfinn. What will he possibly come upon as a justifier to fight again? And and that that is the conversation. What is worth fighting for? What could you die with no regrets? Having having fought for, having lived your life in such a way. And and it really is what's happening here is not Spherical telling her do it or don't do it. What he's saying here is either way. There are issues. Either way, there are scars. Either way, there are consequences. Whether you act or whether you don't act, you just have to be willing to deal with whatever that aftermath is. You have to be able to own up to yourself as the party responsible of making the decision. And forever, as Thorfinn forever carries those bodies through the rest of his life, that is what you are doing with every choice that you make. Whether you choose to hide and shake and do nothing, or you choose to go into the storm to try to clean the wounds of your husband. You have to, at the end of the day, you are answering to yourself, oh, what is that line in the intro? The gods will judge me when I'm dead. Mm -hmm. You are the current, and that's like Canute's current like thing, is like he will be judging his own actions. He will be judging other people's actions in, in the place of the gods. He will be deeming what's right and wrong and peace on earth here. So that he can make it Mm-hmm. tangible everything's so freaking connected that when I know. we talk about it's, it it all just kind of is like, it's so Whoa. easy to go from one character of one another. arc to a completely different place and it's all just so well like sewn that's beautiful it's 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 vidlin saga season two is something really really yes. special um man uh w- one of my like one of the first episodes or first scenes in this episode that really stood out to me was when snake interrupted the meeting mm-hmm. um and and said don't take his hand yep arnaid right i also um wrote down something from that moment too um what did you write down so i wrote down the line if you do i'll kill him yeah and i I think that it started to kind of breed what ap- actually happens with this fight to me in terms of Snake and his energy with it. Snake doesn't want to just kill people. Mm-hmm. Snake doesn't want to just mistreat slaves. That is not what he's about. He wants t- wanted to ensure that he didn't have to kill this man here. That's what he wanted. He wanted to take him alive, yes, so he can ask him more questions, but also because Snake doesn't want to just kill people. He's here to protect this farm. It's his job. If you put him in a position where he has to directly protect this farm, he's going to do it. But I don't, he's not going to take lives needlessly. I yeah, feel. he, uh, he, what I assume his mission would be here, if Kettle is right next to him, it would be, or Ket- more specifically, when he's off, off the farm, is capture him, wait until Kettle's around so he can make his own judgment. Like right. he's, uh, he's not the judge of the farm 
He's not, yeah. He is just the person that is supposed to protect it. And if you put him in a position where he has to actually make an executive decision, Uh then he'll have to make an executive decision. But we already knew how Snake would want to handle situations with uh, violence and whether needlessly or, or not by his first meeting with Thorfinn and what all of his little little other protectors, warriors are doing with kind of cutting up Thorfinn. Mm -hmm. He's totally, like, against that. That is not his property to make a decision with. As is Arnaid's husband, Garter, is not his property to make a decision with. Yeah. He even says, we have to tell the uncle of the person, that the owner that he slayed, that we have captured him. Mm -hmm. It is not his decision to take the life here. He's, while he's treating garter is property he also doesn't need want to needlessly have violence you know what though like even talking about a sense of justice and what would you fight for what do you think snakes what order would snake refuse because of his own sense of self we don't actually know if he's unwilling or i don't think he's unwilling to kill someone i don't think he would have yeah yeah, of course but we also know he was hired at by kettle to be the, the boss that means they have to align to some degree. Kettle, I feel like, would have hired someone that he felt like would ju- like make maybe the more... Wouldn't rush into the killing. Wouldn't rush into the harm. Specifically based off of Snake's relationship with Spherical alone, it makes me give time and patience and like, the idea of what snake's own beliefs would be and, the, and where he would deviate in terms of his own deeming of what's right and wrong Mm -hmm. and i I love that that's a thing um the i like in hindsight especially knowing that arnade said that she was scared it's such a scene seeing uh what's his name a garter reach out for her hand and she's not reaching back out she's keeping her hand still while he's continuously reaching and also man do you know how difficult it is to draw hands Hands are really freaking There's a hard. reason that AI art is str- struggling it's to catch so up in hands, terms of hands. Everyone else is, our real artists are bad at hands. They oh, it's hard. are masterful in their details of where and hurt. Right, yeah, where you would see marks on the hands. I really like how they do the nails. I oh god, the, it's phenomenal. This nail the nails in this whole series have always shown like someone is working with their hands or chipped. They're they're not manicured or completely together and it wasn't necessary to do that because they could have just done nails on a hand and no one would have batted an eye to that. Then they would have been like, "Okay, yep, that's a hand." But the extra detail of showing the nails as they do just kind of furthers not only time period, but also just the emotional sense of like working with your hands and maybe even the lack of freedom. In this scene in particular that I'm showing on screen right now, it's not even um, Garter's hand that astounds me. Like you have to have an anatomical knowledge to be able to draw Arnaid's hand the way that you are. Like, like, if you look, look at her knuckles. I know that's so and, and freaking hard the, to do. The shading around them and the way that it fo- it follows your hand down to where her wrist would be. It's breathtaking. I think you would have needed a reference photo. I don't know if you can just you say for so, a, a person like a an artist with anatomical knowledge could have just pulled that out. They a hundred percent were either studying their own hands with a light on it. You know, mm. to get like where the shadow would be with the actual knuckles and the divots, because they're not giant like divots that happen in a hand. They're very subtle. But if the right well, shadow, here, the here's right the light thing source, though, that it that depends on what the person's health looks like and their age looks like. The idea that Arnaid's hands might be more might be skinnier and true. and and more worn because and and weathered because of how often she's in water and bathing things and doing work mm-hmm. like that all is taken into account here. It's so well done. I'm talking about hands. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go around to where uh, <laughs> where Thorfinn pulls Einar back. Mm-hmm. This was such a great scene. I agree. 
you had brought this up previously when we first started kind of doing our immediate gushing in the mm-hmm. discussion, our immediate where our brains are going before we get into like maybe a more civilized and chronological going specific. through the episode. Specific. Detailed, yeah. Detailed, yes. Um, and when you started bringing up this scene, I was like, oh my God, okay, yeah. Like just getting ready for when we actually get to maybe like talk about the dialogue itself. Yeah. Because I do have parts of this episode, this scene. That do you have anything really that stands like. out? Um, I, I think that you started touching on it when it was briefly talked about before, about uh, mainly what Thorfinn's doing here is trying to awaken for Aenor what it would mean if he steps in here. Aenor is not even thinking about... It's the same thing of, like, do you understand the consequences of your actions? If you step your foot forward here, are you ready for what could be the inevitable taking of a life? We have Omar on his way here having just taken his first life. And it was not necessarily on purpose of him either. And he was not ready to deal with how that would feel. He is not feeling very positive the way that his brother would feel if he's taken a life. Yeah. And I I think that it was really important. Like, I get you, man. I get you that you want to jump in here and save her or protect her or give her freedom. But do you know for yourself what you would be giving up for yourself? It It's... Almost like the idea of the lack of considering what you're actually capable of. You need to be able to, if you are not examining what you'd be capable of capable of before making a plan of action or taking action, then you are, there, there's no plan, there's no plan to begin with. Like there, there might as well not be Anar at all attempting trying to, give Arnaid freedom here if he hasn't considered if he is even capable enough mm-hmm. to do one of the things in his own plan. Right. Do not walk into that fray if you are not willing to. Could you use your axe to kill a man? Yeah. God. And what that does to Anar. Could you use this axe to kill a man? And look, and he immediately... immediately... upon hearing that he hears, he totally hears Thorfinn. Mm-hmm. He, it resonates with him, painfully so. Because then he's like, what am I supposed to do here? What can I do? It, it's like dragging on him. It's hurting him that he, he can't act here. And he can't figure out what he can do other than fight. It's so, it's so great to see Thorfinn in this, in this character. Like, to exactly what Snake said, like... Good call, Thorfinn. Mm-hmm. But thinking about it, it, like Thorfinn's not questioning what what's right or wrong here, and or what should what they should be doing. It's the the la the the false logic within Einar's own mm-hmm. sentiment or motive, right? What Thorf- or intention? What Thorf? I, I think that you're onto something really really brilliant. Is that Thorfinn is not specifically thinking about the greater good here of the other people that are surrounding them right now, his focus is on Anar. Mm-hmm. His care is on Anar's soul and Anar's heart and how Anar will feel about himself going forward. His focus, and if we're talking about salvation or burdens or scars or someone carrying bodies, Thorfinn is worried about his friend, this person that has meant so much to him as we've seen in this show, Entering into the same nightmares that we've seen Thorfinn have. He is, he is complete, his gaze, his vision isn't even on the rest of what's happening. It's completely on Einar. Mm-hmm. That is what, he's caring about Einar here when Einar is caring about Arnaid. So good. It's so great. You know what's, what's wild? The, the things that I find myself writing down and, and wanting to talk about have like have completely shifted from the first season I, like i have no like i loved the fight here don't but i have nothing that is like it's not about that it's and not I, about that and i i love it so much i love it um i'm i'm skipping quite a bit ahead to once they're inside and uh 
Arnaid says that it's better to sit still and wait for the storm to pass. Mm -hmm. Thank you, but it's all right. Sometimes things can't be changed. I love that line. Um, it's better not to do anything in those situations. It's better to sit still and wait for the storm to pass. I love how this is brought up and then challenged later in the episode. Mm -hmm. We uh, even see her doing this in a visual representation before this scene even happens with her uh, sinking down behind a building with her ears covered. And she continues to cover her ears long after Garter is already far enough away that you cannot hear him screaming her name anymore. And it's, it's, she's, that visual alone was so incredibly powerful to then be our segue into her trying to explain to someone else to please do the same thing that she's trying her hardest to do it it's like when she is sitting down with her back against the the, the wall outside and still covering her ears she is in the middle of having a response to trauma like mm -hmm. it, like not i and I'm, I'm saying that in the mindset of like if, if, if you've known anybody who, who's, whether it's, you know, PTSD or whether it's anxiety or panic attack, all of those, you can try to bridge if the, per if the victim, if the person experiencing this pain in this horrific moment, to them, they need grounding. Everything inside of their body and in their mind and in their hands and in their ears is overexposed. Everything is dialed past your gauge limit. And, and at that point, the second that you're removed and can't see anything, it doesn't just go away. It, 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 I, I feel like the attention there for Arnaid's character is what's, it, it surprises me how they, they handled that and in the best way possible. Right. It I, feels so real. I also feel like the main thing that she was probably trying so hard to maybe not even be imagining when she has her ears covered is she hearing him yelling her name or is she hearing her son crying as he's being taken away garter was being taken away from her mm -hmm. in that scene we we now we now know that her son was also being taken away from her screaming for yeah. her Yalty. yelling Yalty. her name you know i i feel like the we're obviously going to get into it, and, and we need to. It's just, it's going to be, it, it made me cry. So I'm like, a little like, ah. Uh. What, her son being taken just away? Just getting into her flashback of what her life had been like, and what he had been like, and then the fact that there are things he does not know. This man that is already so broken upon her this re being reunited. Anar, in... This is a very, like, out there comparison, but Anar was trying to act on his own behalf for what he thought was right in a, a similar-ish sense to Garter. Like, like obviously, Garter's a slave trying, uh, running away trying to get freedom with his wife and his child, and he doesn't know better. But the idea that Garter himself doesn't know what Arnaid has been through, or what the current situation with her and her child is. like He doesn't know yet that there are scars for the decision he's made, other than them being sold into slavery. Yep. To him, he sees this reaching out of his hand as, I have now come to fix everything that I have broken. He, I said I'd protect you. I said, and I will now protect you and our son. Like, he believes in that moment, extending his hand, that he has the power now to make up for the the pots, the iron, yep. everything that he was willing to fight for back then. But that's not true. And he doesn't know. He doesn't know that when he said that he was going to continue to protect his son, that the action that he took resulted in a scenario where Arnaid herself said he could have protected us better if he was here. Right. What happens is they go off and they all end up in slavery and the son is taken away. Yep. All the young men walk to battle. All the women and children were left behind to defend our homes. That broke my heart. As soon as uh, she said that, that hurt. 
uh, there was a couple lines up here. I, I it's I'm kind of getting emotional even like relooking at the scenes. Mm -hmm. Um, when I met Gardner today, I was afraid of him. I'm sure all the suffering he's experienced has changed him. He is the storm itself now. He is the storm. What itself a fucking now. great piece of dialogue. This time, I must protect my child from the, from men's, the men's storm. storm. That was crazy information drop. The right. fact that she's pregnant with Ketzel's son. If if you were to child, have any interesting segue to Kettle being on a ship coming back here right now, yeah, that's it. He has now he the life that this child is about to be brought into is not the life that previous Kettle before he left would probably have been very excited about this. But how will Kettle feel knowing that they're about to war? Yeah, their whole farm. There, it's you cannot raise this child healthy and peacefully on this farm as you have been living here relatively peacefully for the past years yeah especially knowing what comes after now after arnie tells uh anar to stay here we get a few shots of the house and the embers and then we see arnie contemplating by herself for a second and then she gets a flash of yalti at the same time that this fl uh, Yalti being taken away at the same time this flame erupts mm -hmm. and then we get to see her eyes widen. Mm -hmm. um, what was your, like, now looking back, like, what's your interpretation of, of that scene? Like, did, like, what did it give you in terms of what you think she was feeling at that moment? Especially after what she had just said to Anar. I think at that moment is the moment that she chooses to do something and not just sit around like, yes, this might be, you're trying to protect your child from, from the storms that men create, but is there something that she can do? Is there something she can do for Yalti? Would the best thing for him be her going and protecting his father or doing something kind for his father? I, I, I feel like she's probably torn right now between her past life and this current her son that she's lost to the unborn child within her. Like, these two lives that she's been living and the hopes that she had for a peaceful life in the future is now kind of crumbling around her. And I, I'm i curious what you thought about that scene with the the ember kicking up as soon as she saw him. It's, it's interesting because, like, that that's the motivating factor for her to open the door right that that's the last thing we see of her before we're seeing her tuck in we're, spherical but like opening the door and really going and we hear that the reasonings to like at least tending his wounds right but i don't I, are you going into the storm and if you're going into the storm is there a right way to do it because regardless of if you're in the storm or not it leaves scars behind mm -hmm. the storm itself can cause a ridiculous amount of damage what is what is it on you at this point in time for our nade to do what you should be doing what's right what's the correct course of action because it, it's easy to say for spherical or at least a little easier in the oh man if you could go back and try to stick up and fight for this woman that your son was in love with like that's an easy easier i think decision to go back and look at but at this point in time for rna things are so much more complicated like she has her own unborn child with her while her husband's locked up while he doesn't know that what i think that at the very least, Arnaid's intention and desire would lead her to telling him what happened to his son. That's what I was um, thinking as well. I, 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 I could tell you were like about to say yeah. it. I was like, yes. I And I was going to ask you that question. If if you hadn't like said it, I was going to ask you, do you think that she, maybe the stronger desire than cleaning his woods, wounds is to tell him? I'm. I don't know what he does with that information. Do you? D does he lash out at Arnade for not protecting his son? 
Does he realize that he failed in protecting him? Is there any, like, did you see him die? Is he out there somewhere still? We can still find him. You know, like, there are so many different possibilities. Could she see it as a way to almost see if there's still the glimpse of the man before he left? Ooh. That if she brings up what was lost, what they bo- and they both can grieve together now, finally, and he, he will know the truth, will... Is that a chance that she didn't recognize him? This was a this was a storm of a man that this was not the man that had had said goodbye to her before leaving. He was completely different now. And is that possibly a chance at seeing a glimpse of him back where he can he can truly be there for her? Yeah. Does she need someone, him specifically, the father of the child of Yalti, to be there together with her to grieve him? Yeah. Spherical saying, I'm sorry that I can't help you. Mm -hmm. God. I'm sure there's, like, way more other things. But that's, like, the scars leave behind conversation. Yeah. I just had one last thing in regard to Arnade and Mm. Spherical. And that is that there's, uh, between Arnade's past and what happened with her to Spherical's opinion about what Kettle has done with the farm, there's a parallel in terms of, like, the wealthy village building up a wealthy farmer trying to seek that take more than what take more than what you need yes and how that would then be a downfall like at the time that spherical has this conversation this almost premonition with kettle everything is still peaceful and happy but we know now at this moment as we are learning about our nades past we are seeing that it is now the exact same thing is happening is that ships are on their way mm-hmm and that is going to bring, and because of wealth, because of greed, yeah. ships are on their way in both instances. Do you think, uh, what do you think Anar's response is going to be if he is aware that Arnade is left before she comes back? Like, is there is there one out of, like, she told me she doesn't want me to get involved in the storm, or I'm going to do it anyway? They try to calm him down. Like, there's some, you know what I mean? I think at the moment I would hope that he would just take her words as they were Mm -hmm. and believe her that if she did need something from him or want something from him that she would ask yeah, or she would tell him because that's kind of the situation she's set up here is that she tells him directly that she doesn't want him to get caught up in the storm. It's not something that would make her happy, bring her any joy or even possibly save her in this instance if anything it could possibly cause her more harm and this is something she feels that she has to do independently it's a choice that she herself is deciding to make independently that hopefully wouldn't have any repercussions on anyone else when the village men all gather together and make a decision they are making a decision that will affect everyone not just them but the wives and the children at home she here is wanting to make a decision for herself by herself Mm -hmm. that will hopefully she will be the only one at the end of the day that has to answer for it. Um, I wish that I had a better understanding of how Ketel truly feels about Arnade because from what little we've seen, it seems to be extremely important, um, her presence in his life. But I bring that up out of, like, the potential of him coming back, there might be a fight, Garter is a fighter. Fight for your freedom. F- fight for your wife's freedom. Would that ever be on the table, considering that Kettle has an unborn child with an Arnade? He might not know about that yet, but he definitely feels great affection towards her. We've ramped up the stakes here. It was so already much. going to be hard enough, as I think Snake called Arnade the master's darling or mm-hmm. something like that. It, the stakes were already high from that little interaction we had of Kettle with his head in like her lap in the bed being like, you are the only one that understands me. The stakes were already high and now it's... they're even higher to the idea of can Arnade even have freedom here? If anything, she's latching on to this child as being what will uh, make the suffering less so. If she can make this uh, a nice, peaceful home for this child, then then that will make 
everything, all the other suffering kind of null. She'll be willing to be with a man that she doesn't love being Kettle because what he will do is provide a peaceful life for her where she can, I guess, get a second chance at being able to, to protect her child and give them a good life. Yeah. Damn. But it's also kind of like trauma <laughs> response-ish that she wants to like try again like that there was a, a failure in a way of the other child and and that now it, it, it was it's maybe a strong desire even more of a strong desire for her to be able to give this child everything she wanted to give yalti not fuck up this time and yeah protect them from the men's storm <sighs> what an episode what an episode honestly but timing wise, I guess we need to get into wondering what the next episode would be and when is Kettle gonna come back and where does this even fit? I don't know. I have no idea. I, I, I could imagine him coming back next episode. I can imagine it not being for five. I Right, are we going by days? Because we know it's like a four day ship ride from Knut's house to here. Great season. This is a great season. Mm-hmm. All right, that's okay. all I have you. Me too, yep. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time.